everybody to another episode of A Reef After Hours. I do apologize for the small hiatus, but as I mentioned in my big thank you video, there will be a few more videos coming up to try to complete some of the more complex mechanisms and experiments that cell biology has to offer. So in this episode today, what we're going to be talking about is apoptosis. Apoptosis, as you may know and have heard, is known as programmed cell death or cell suicide. But basically what happens here is that certain cells know when their life is going to end. They've done their job, they've lived out so many days or months, and they're ready to die off. Now apoptosis is different from another form of cell death known as necrosis. In necrosis, and is popped or burst, and everything within the cytoplasm gets released and now this can cause damage to other neighboring cells apoptosis happens within one cell and is programmed and follows a series of mechanisms and step-by-step -step processes which we'll be going over today and it only happens within that one cell therefore does not affect neighboring cells so what we're going to be looking at are two key mechanisms that have to do with apoptosis one is cell survival. So what mechanism, what pathway is activated in order to keep the cell alive and to avoid apoptosis? Then what we'll look at is apoptosis itself, the mechanism and pathway that activates the cell death. This is a cell survival pathway. What I'm going to be talking to you about is a particular uh, kinase cascade. So remember a kinase is an enzyme that phosphorylates other proteins or other enzymes in order to activate them in most cases, in some cases turn them off. In this case we're going to be discussing a small kinase cascade, so a kinase that phosphorylates another kinase that phosphorylates another kinase. And this is going to ultimately phosphorylate a protein that when phosphorylated will prevent or avoid apoptosis and keep the cell alive. You'll hear some very familiar names of proteins that we've discussed before from other chapters as well. Okay, so but I will try to do my best to review some of these terms. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So in this pathway, obviously, what we see here is the inside of the cell. So here are our cytoplasmic players. Here in the gray bar up here is our cell membrane. And as you can see right here in this dumbbell-like shaped protein, we've got um, a transmembrane protein. So this transmembrane protein is playing the role of a receptor, clearly. It has a cytoplasmic end, it has a transmembrane domain, and then it's got the exoplasmic or outside of the cell domain. So this is acting as a receptor. Now the receptor is known as a trick receptor, TRK. These trick receptors, okay, it stands for tyrosine receptor kinases. Tyrosine receptor kinases. If you flip this around, this acronym, you can also get RTK, which we've also discussed, receptor tyrosine kinases. And yes, they are ultimately very similar and play the same role. So basically what a receptor tyrosine kinase is versus a trick or tyrosine receptor kinase is, is remember that these are transmembrane proteins that are outside of the cell that stand near each other. And when the ligand or signal molecule binds to these receptor proteins, they come together and join in what's known as dimerization. And then once they've gone through dimerization, on the cytoplasmic ends, there are tyrosine residues on either protein that will phosphorylate each other. Once this uh, receptor on the cytoplasmic ends has had phosphorylated tyrosines, this then attracts and activates other proteins downstream within the cell itself. So this is what we're talking about today with apoptosis. We're looking at TRKs, T-R-Ks tyrosine receptor kinases. So the signal molecule 
that's going to activate the receptor and undergo dimerization and then autophosphorylation is known as a trophic factor. So the trophic factor are cells' life signals. Okay, there you, trophic factors are essentially the signal molecule that tells the cell to keep surviving and to avoid apoptosis. So once the trophic factor comes in, it goes ahead and binds again causing dimerization leads to autophosphorylation. Now the receptor, once we're inside the cell, the receptor goes ahead, attracts and binds and activates all at the same time our first kinase. This kinase is known as Pi3. So now the Pi3 kinase gets phosphorylated, turned on, and now Pi3 goes on to phosphorylate and activate another kinase known as the AKT kinase. So again, what we're talking about here is that kinase cascade. So here is our little kinase cascade. So again, the, recept the receptor gets phosphorylated, phosphorylates the Pi3 kinase, which goes on and phosphorylates the AKT kinase. Now, here comes a very important sequence now. Once the AKT kinase has been phosphorylated and activated, its job is to phosphorylate a protein appropriately named BAD, B-A-D. Now, if the BAD protein gets phosphorylated, then it will not be able to do bad things. Because what we're going to see in just a minute is that this BAD protein, this little red ball here, this BAD protein, if left unphosphorylated, will go ahead and activate a bad thing, apoptosis. But remember, this pathway is to avoid apoptosis. So again, the AKT kinase phosphorylates the bad protein, and now the bad protein is going to get sequestered or held hostage by a protein complex known as the 1433 protein complex. So the 1433 protein complex binds and recognizes a phosphorylated bad protein and sequesters it. Therefore, the bad protein is not free and is not able to do bad things such as apoptosis. Now here we're looking at the apoptosis. So again, we want to kill the cell. The cell is going to die now at this point. So as you can see, the things that are not happening. There is no trophic factor or signal molecule binding to the receptor here, the trick. So therefore, the trick is not activated. Therefore, our kinase cascade, which consisted of the Pi3 kinase and the AKT kinase, is inactive. So if our kinase cascade is turned off, then that means our bad protein is unphosphorylated and free to roam around. So now we're going to follow the apoptosis pathway. So because our bad protein is free, the bad protein comes down here to the mitochondrial membrane. So remember the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, contains an outer membrane, an intermembrane space, and then another inner membrane before you reach the matrix. So here, the bad protein binds to the outer mitochondrial membrane. And when it does that, the bad protein is going to bind to a uh, pro set of proteins known as the BCL complex. So when the bad protein unphosphorylated binds to the BCL complex, two very important things are going to happen. One, a channel also found on the outer mitochondrial membrane known as the BAX channel, B-A-X. The BAX channel is going to open up. This is going to cause an influx in of ions, okay? So charged molecules, so various ions, are going to be going in and out through this BAX channel. The second thing that happens is that cytochrome C, so think back and look back, but cytochrome C is a component of the electron transport chain, which again happens in this mitochondria. Cytochrome C is going to diffuse out of the outer mitochondrial membrane and escape into the cytoplasm. Okay? 
So those are two key things that will trigger this apoptosis pathway. So the bad protein, unphosphorylated, binds to the BCL complex. First two things to happen, the BAX channel opens up, causing ions to flow in and out. And then the cytochrome C leaves the intermembrane space and comes out into the cytoplasm. Now what's going to happen is that this cytochrome C is going to hook up with a protein known as APAF1, APAF1. Now when the APAF1 and cytochrome C protein come together, they're going to generate and form a spiral-like protein complex known as the apoptosome. The apoptosome are going to go ahead and bind to our first enzyme here known as procaspase 9. Now, there is caspases, are again, are certain type of protein, and in the inactive form, okay, caspases are known as procaspases. So by adding the prefix of pro before the word caspase, this means that your caspase or enzyme is inactive. So when the caspase 9 is inactive, it is known as procaspase 9. So when the apoptosome, though, has been formed and it binds to procaspase 9, it's going to stimulate procaspase 9 to undergo self-cleavage. So that is the enzyme itself is going to chop itself up and make the active form, which is just caspase 9. Now caspase 9, the active form of the enzyme, goes on and binds to and activates another caspase, which at this time is known as pro-caspase 3, because again the pro-caspase is the inactive state. So caspase 9 binds to pro-caspase 3. Pro-caspase 3 will go also go through self-cleavage. And now it's known as caspase 3. And now it's caspase 3 that has one of the duties of moving on and actually causing the various things that happen with cell death or apoptosis. So caspase 3 can go on to break down the nuclear lamins, for example, and break down the nucleus and ultimately the cell body will shrink and fragment okay so again cell survival versus apoptosis so in cell survival you need a trophic factor which binds to your trick receptor your tyrosine receptor kinase this then activates the kinase cascade so pi 3 kinase activated goes on to activate and turn on the AKT kinase. That AKT kinase is responsible for phosphorylating the bad protein. And if the bad protein is phosphorylated, then it gets sequestered or held hostage by the protein complex 1433. So bad protein is basically held hostage, cannot do bad things, therefore apoptosis is avoided. But now, the opposite happens with apoptosis. There is no trophic factor. Therefore, there is no kinase cascade activated. BAD is unphosphorylated. It's free to roam around in the cell. Goes down and binds to the BCL complex on the outer mitochondrial membrane. This causes two important things to happen. One, the BAX channel opens out, up, allowing ions to flow in and out. Cytochrome C escapes from the intermembrane space of the mitochondria out into the cytoplasm. The apoptosome forms, and this activates the caspase cascade. So procaspase 9 becoming caspase 9, caspase 9 activating procaspase 3 to become caspase 3, and ultimately leading to apoptosis, the cell 